attack now by Isaac Del Toro, number seven. Been active all day, and now he goes across up and over the top, and it's Del Toro who's now reaching out and to the victory. And he was riding at the back not long ago. That was actually Nick Schultz there who was trying to close it down, but this is a great attack. This could be the winning move. He's coming up to the final left-hand oh bend. Boy. And hesitation behind. So Del Toro, he'll be loving this. And he's leaving it too late. Bars. He's not even on the hooks, so he's riding off the handlebars on the top. Caleb Ewan is in amongst there as well, but is it too little, too late inside the final 100 metres? Well, as they come now, they build up the sprint behind, and Caleb Ewan is not in on this one, as it is Israel. Oh, he's done it! Right on the line. has moved up a couple of the positions as well. He sits on the wheel of Kristen, who's already tried. Kristen's still there, the man with a white jersey unzipped. It's Landa going all the way, and now it's going to be Ednepal through the centre. Rimko Ednepal having a real go, but there's going to be a reaction from Martinez. Behind that, trying to do the same. It's Kus who can't react. It's Ednepal on the left as we look at it. It's Martinez as we look at it on the right hand side. And Bora Hans going to go for this one. Bora Hans going looking to try and take the win at the top of the Alto de Foya. Ednepal can only follow. It's Martinez who's punched a mighty hole in the air in front of him and is going to the line. Here is Lot of Destiny with Milo Menton absolutely steaming. There is Alphacin, and look at the uh, the men from Uno X in a fantastic position here. Big grind coming up wide and round the outside. This is Remy Roja, I believe, Brian. Yeah, it looks that way, but uh, just see Mads Pedersen, he reacted to it very wow. quickly there. So we're coming up now to 200 metres ago. Rochas on the front, Mads Pedersen is there. Uh, but so is Laurence in third place. He is, Axel Laurence is wrestling the bike, he comes up under the shoulders of Mats Pedersen. Axel Laurence looks the handiest of all of them at the moment. He's going for it, he's got the uh, the right line. Mats Pedersen's going to try and mug him at the, the very last, but can't quite get round him for the time being. Pedersen needs to dig deep right down, but he's not going to get there, I don't think. It's going to be the man from... Oh no, not quite the finish line, I beg your pardon. They're still coming, uh, uh, 50 metres to go, 25 now. Mats Pedersen still grinding, he's not going to quite get there. What a win! Here we go, Jonas Vinigo is off. We've waited for this moment to start the season. We have lift off from Jonas Vinegar, and who can go with him? Let's see. One year ago, we saw him shred this race to pieces across two road stages and then that incredible time trial at the very end of the race. And he started this one just how he left off last year. We saw him take off the rain jacket. It was like a waving of a white flag ready to go, and he's off. Jonas Vinegar looked over his shoulder and gone again. It might just be that he needs the gradient, maybe, and it constantly changes. They're ever so slightly down here, a little bit of a false flat here. It might be that he needs a bit more of a consistent climb to make it count. Five K to go to the finish. Jonas Vinegar, do you know what a ride by Alex Molinar, Ian? It is really impressive, this, having been in that breakaway, or die, just as I say it, he's lost about a bike length. The audacity to hang on, he's hung on as long as he can, and as soon as I pick it out, of course, it's just being dispatched. What a shame. Finger goes, goes again. This will be it. This should be it. But let's not forget, the finish is not at the top of this climb. The finish is nearly three kilometres over the top and downhill, so we'll have a time trial of his own to do. Now he knows he's clear. It's taken a while to get clear, and he's actually only got 800 metres left of the climb anyway. But last year's victor, Jonas Vinegar, is now going clear. Uh, it hasn't looked crushingly dominant as it was one year ago on those two road stages, but it's certainly been good enough to get him clear of a very, very elite climbing group.
finger got absolutely flying down this descent. This is going to be a fascinating chase. Um, we know that Jonas Vingegaard is one of the best time trialists in this field. He's a good descender too as well, not necessarily amongst the very best of them within a field like this, but it shouldn't cause him too many problems. Plus he's got clear space all around him to take exactly the lines he wants to through these corners. Jonas Vingegaard is going to take the win. It will just be some moment of two until he gets his hands in the air. But he'll keep driving towards the line because this is time gaps over a very, very strong chasing lead. Down onto the drops, out of the saddle. He knows he's done it now. We haven't yet seen the smile, but we will do in just a moment. Jonas Vinigo kisses his ring, bangs his chest and wins the stage. Remco having the boat going. Here we go. We waited for this moment. James Knox was at the end of his tether, Robbie. And we have liftoff. Season 2024 has liftoff for Remco Ebnepo. We waited for this moment. He is focused on the Tour de France this year. And the Belgian champion is going with some... What is this now? We've got 50k. 50 kilometers to go. And up just asking for the team car to come up, maybe just wanting to also get himself a time check and maybe a last bottle, a little bit of nutrition, just to go into the last part of, of this race. There you go, fresh bit on, a little speed boost at the same time. This is the steepest part, a nice crowd out to see Remco Evnipol for the final time. Remco Evnepol is clear solo as he has been since 50 kilometers to go when he attacked about three quarters of the way up the Park Forest style. It was James Knox, the British rider, or Sudar Quickstep, who was the last man to peel off and the inevitable happened. Remco Evnepol moved to the right-hand side of the road where it was really narrow in amongst the crowds, stuck his elbows out to attack and then tucked his elbows in to maintain and build that lead. A little bit of a tailwind will push him in. In actual fact, they had a headwind coming up this way last year, so this year definitely helpful in its second edition of this race. Remco Evnepol, day one, win 51. The Belgian champion sends out a message, puts the phone to his ear and slams it down. Look at this. Of course, everybody's waiting for that big moment on the moor. This time, nobody chases. This time, nobody chases. And Matteo Jorgensen might just be about to ride away in the Omlop at Newsblatt. The Patriots not going to actively chase here, Mohoric. Niels Pollitt will try, but has he left it late? Remember, Tratnik, one of those riders who's so hard to pigeonhole, so able on so much different terrain. to go, pained expressions on the face of both Tratnik and Pollitt. Pollitt can't even come round and give a turn yet. And he's not doing. That could spell danger here for this group.
German, the former German road race champion and Jan Tratnik from Slovenia. This would be either one of these riders' biggest win of their career. It is Tratnik on the left-hand side. Tratnik goes and shake of the head from Pollitt. Tratnik is going to take a win. What a superb performance by the man from Ljubljana. It is Team Visma Lisa Mike in the form of Jan Tratnik who wins on loop Het Newsblad 2024. What a ride.